There are a number of different static analysis tools that you can use to analyze your brownfield projects. The one that I'm going to work with today is Endepend. What I've done already is loaded up the Screwturn Wiki project and specifically its core DLL and the main web page DLL, so all the compiled code behind stuff. What we can do inside of this tool is start looking at some of the details about different things in the code base. What I've got up right now is the cyclomatic complexity for the project. We can take here and look and see that this one thing, the RSS pay under page load, and that has a cyclomatic complexity of 86 for a total of 252 lines. So in 252 lines of code, there are 86 different code execution paths that could occur. We can go over and take a look at the Screwturn Wiki Core's formatter and the format method on it. And we can see here that it has a cyclomatic complexity of 183 for 551 lines of code. So 183 code execution paths in this one method. These two things are highlighting problems in the code base where we have too much going on inside of one area of the code base and we need to stop and think about how we can split those apart. If we leave them as they are, we can't test them very well. It's too complicated, there are too many permutations and we'll never be able to get good coverage and thus good high confidence in them. Another thing that I like looking at inside of this tool is the static HTML report that's generated. So if we open that up, it comes up in our browser, you can see there are a number of different things in it that we want to look at. The first one I want to look at are the assembly metrics. So these are things about the DLL level code. We look here, we can see for the core and the main wiki that we have a number of different lines of code, 11,000 in one, 8,000 in the other. But the two that I commonly look at here are the instability and abstractness. Instability represents how open to change your code base is. The closer to the value of one that you have here, the less likely that you're going to be able to change your code with little or no ramifications to other pieces of code. So you can see here that the main wiki has a value of one, so it's very unlikely that we'll ever be able to change anything in it without having side effects and other pieces of the code. A level of 0.78 is very, very high. I'd like to see these down below 0.5 or something like that. I'm not a stickler for the values when I start looking at these types of metrics. If it's 0.51 or 0.58 and everything else is 0.90, I'm probably going to want to look at the 0.90 ones first. 0.58 may not be ideal, but it's still better than 0.90. The other one I look at here is abstractness. The closer to one that we have this value, it means that we are almost at the point of having all abstract classes and interfaces. Inversely, if we're at a value of zero, it means we have no abstract classes and no interfaces. These are two important concepts for us to be able to quickly and easily pull out code and replace it with new code. So as you can see here, we have very low values, almost zero for both of them. So it's unlikely that we're ever going to be able to pull out a piece of code and replace it with another one easily, just based on the abstraction that that code is represented by. The next area of the code base that I like to look at inside of this report is the assembly dependency diagram. So if we scroll down to it, it's this diagram here. What it's showing is what do our assemblies that we have done analysis on refer to and how much do they refer to them. So the thinner the line, the less reference to them they make. The thicker the line, the higher the reference. So you can see here the main project, screwturn.wiki, has a fairly heavy reference to system.web. You would expect that as it's a web project and it has all the web pages in it. It also has an extremely heavy reference to screwturn.wiki.core. One thing that we can see here is that the main web pages inside screwturn.wiki are making reference to system.data. So that's a data access component, and we probably don't want our web pages making direct access to the data components. This is something that I would flag and say, I need to look at this in a later time and figure out why our data access is happening right in the web pages instead of through the core. There are a number of other things that we can look at here, but overall, this is actually a fairly good diagram. It's really common on big projects that you have a spaghetti of lines going everywhere. All projects reference system.data. 
all projects reference system.web. And this is a real problem when you have this going on. And you need to start whittling it down so that this diagram is much more manageable to read and thus your code is much more manageable to deal with. There are a number of other things that this report can show us. A lot of them are based on reporting and query language stuff. We can go in and write our own queries that say what our expectations of our code base are and have those results returned back to us. And this is important once you get a stronger understanding of what your project needs and what your expectations of your code base are. Overall though, static analysis at this level is really just giving me guidance to certain areas that I probably want to look at. Based on what we've seen here, I want to look at why system.data is referenced by the web pages. I also want to look at why we have no abstraction and no interfaces inside of our code base, and why do we have such strong coupling and high levels of direct use of code in our code base.